scattering. So where did we get to last time? We did the following things. This is a recap. We wrote a solution, a scattering solution, or I'll use R. And this solution had a wave that represented the incoming wave, and it had what we call the scattered wave. So there were two pieces to the solution. We understood that setting up a scattering problem with a central potential, we had a wave that came in, and then we had a spherical wave And that was an outgoing spherical wave. Um, I've added a subscript k to represent the wave number or the k of the wave. This is an energy eigenstate we're calculating. And therefore, the energy is k squared, h bar squared, k squared over 2m. Um, and we're writing a solution with that energy. That's an energy eigenstate. And this solution is, as written, not an exact solution of the Schrodinger equation, but it's approximately exact for R much greater than A, where A is the range of your potential. So this is only valid in those cases. It's not valid near the scattering. For R near zero, that's not uh, true. And it's not an exact solution. Uh, this would have been an exact solution of the wave uh, of the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And this, without the f, would have been an exact solution. But with the f, it's an approximate solution. But that's a solution that represents the physics of scattering. Then we also showed that the differential cross-section was, in fact, given by this function f. So this function f is really what we're after. And um, if we know f, we know the differential cross-section, which is something we measure experimentally. We're scattering particles, and we detect them. And the differential cross-section tells us about our ability and the number of particles that each detector picks up. Then we restricted ourselves to the case of central potentials. And for those central potentials, V of R was some function of just the scalar distance. In such cases, the cross-section would not have a phi dependence. You can imagine, here is the object, is spherically symmetric, and you're shooting waves. And therefore, the cross-section and the amplitude will be independent of the angle phi. There's already a direction picked up by the incoming wave. But um, otherwise, it's, uh, it's just that. So we wrote solutions in those cases. Um, if we are going to solve, as we will today, some of these problems, you need to write complete solutions, and uh, um, spherical solutions are of this form, although the relevant ones that we will be using will have no m. We'll be focusing in solutions that have m equals 0 for us m will be equal to 0. But these are the general solutions. So I'll, maybe I might as well constrain ourselves to our case, already central potential. So we will have solutions of this kind. And uh, these are solutions of the radial equation. And we reviewed those and uh, mentioned that psi of r would be given by al 
JL of KR plus BL NL of KR times uh, YL0 of omega. These will be our solutions. These are the spherical Bessel functions, and those were uh, solutions that are valid as long as you are away from the, um, from the scattering center. So this is valid for r greater than a. Indeed, you know that this could not be valid all the way to the center of the part where the scattering is happening because eta is divergent as r goes to zero. So this is not the solution. This is just the solution for r greater than a, where a is the range of the potential. Imagine a potential that totally becomes zero after some distance a then that is your solution for r greater than a. That is the most general solution given the spherical symmetry of the situation. Then the last thing we discussed was that uh, one part of our solution, the e to the ikz, could be written in that way because it's a solution, so it must admit an expansion of this form. So it is like this. You have uh, a sum over all else with some funny coefficients including an i to the l, y l zero of omega. I might, might as well now put theta because uh, there's no phi dependence in YL0, JL of KR. So this is a pretty remarkable expression we commented last time that represents your plane waves as spherical waves. Last but not least, we have an expansion that is useful for a large argument of the spherical Bessel functions. They both fall off like one over the argument with sines and cosines. And you see a constant shift there in the sines and cosines of L pi over two. And this is for x much greater than one. Not exact either, but uh, approximate. Okay, so these are some of our ingredients already. That's how far we got. And now we're gonna try to get more information and learn how to solve for FK. We need to calculate FK. If you have a given problem, you want the cross section, you need FK. Now, this, the thing we're going to do is a little intricate, a lot of uh, funny formulas. So let's try to keep uh, the ideas very clear about it. So.